The Dargian again, West Ham and the LLDC have another dispute regarding the contract between West Ham United and the London Stadium. And this time, it's in relation to how much West Ham owe the LLDC because of Daniel Kotinski's investment. Since day one, this relationship has never been the best. And when I say day one, I don't mean when we moved in. I mean, it's when we signed that contract back in 2013. The ink was dry. The details were released and the media didn't take too well to it. It was widely labelled as a deal of the century for West Ham United. Not in regards to the match going fan, but in regards to the finances behind it. Just two and a half million a year rent West Ham would pay for moving into London Stadium. Pressure was applied to the LLDC before we'd even step foot into that ground. And since then there's been plenty of hurdles, plenty of disputes. We want to do something to the stadium. You can't, you don't own it. But you can do that. Okay, well, who funds it? Let's have a look at the contract. Let's dispute who funds it. Our hands have been tied since day one. But that is the result of the deal of the century. If you want to get such a really good deal, you're going to have to make compromise somewhere. And I think we found it difficult. But since day one, West Ham and LLDC, I think it's fair to say, haven't always seen eye to eye in regards to how to do things or who pays for things. And once again, we're back at that situation. Now, for months at a time, it'll disappear. We'll forget about it. You get the impression there's always been some form of disputes, but certainly in the last couple of seasons, relations between West Ham and LLDC had improved. But once more, it's become very, very public. And it's in regards to how much West Ham owe the LLDC this time because of Daniel Kotinski's investment. Now, as we know, because of the contract that if the owners sold West Ham at any point for a profit, they had to give a percentage to the LLDC. So because of Kotinski's investment back in um, November 2021, 2.6 million, West Ham paid 2.6 million to the LLDC, believing that that was what they were contractually obliged to do. So there you go, there's your 2.6 million. LLDC feel they're entitled to more. Now that figure that they feel they're entitled to hasn't been put out in the public domain, but it's a few million pounds. Apparently they believe they are expecting a few million more for West Ham and now there's a legal dispute going on between them as to well just how much West Ham actually owe them when you read the contract it's not that clear as to what comes into consideration it's very clear that you take into the likes of shareholder loans for example but in regards to the media funding rights that we have which is worth 30 million that's not mentioned in there so it's I think West Ham have one interpretation of the contract LLDC have another and they've spent now just over seven million on legal fees since West Ham moved into the London Stadium, since we became the tenants of that stadium. That is a lot of money, but they're running with another legal dispute between themselves and West Ham. This has been confirmed a couple of weeks ago and um, through the Freedom of Information Act, there was correspondence between Cannon Brady and Lynn Garner made public. Now, some of those bits were redacted, understandably, but what it did do was confirm a couple of things because Cannon was upset a little bit that... Um, that she, Lynn, had discussed with Pi Capital, remember them? She had discussed financial benefits of the stadium with Pi Capital, but not West Ham. She wouldn't share those details with West Ham United, but she did with Pi Capital. And Karen's argument was, had you spoke to us about Pi Capital, we could have told you the whole thing was a shambles, don't waste your time. But nevertheless, LLDC did have correspondence with Pi Capital regarding the stadium. And if you remember, when Pi Capital made their plea if you like to take over at West Ham it was largely based around the, the, the stadium they wanted the stadium they wanted to take the stadium on they had correspondence so what these letters between Karen and Lynn have confirmed is that Pi Capital did have communication with the LLDC Karen also speaks in there about how West Ham are open to anything. Anything's on the table in regards to the stadium, whether it's buying it, whether it's changing the rental agreements, anything is on the table. But she felt that perhaps the LLDC weren't as forthcoming as they could have been with West Ham United. And Lynn basically responded with, you're, you're right, we haven't been because we've got a legal dispute going on. Now, at the time, that legal dispute wasn't mentioned. It was just mentioned as that. And since then, it's come out. It's in regards to how much West Ham owed the LLDC because of Daniel Kotinski's investment. So we paid 2.6 million, but LLDC believe they're entitled to more. Now, the stadium at the minute, we've had the assembly recently as well. 
and it's just an absolute shambles it really really is they're losing up to 20 million a year currently by 2029 they expect to have lost 1 billion on the london stadium and they're being optimistic when they say they believe they can get losses down to just 10 million a year that's their optimistic outlook now the reason this becomes more and more prominent at the minute is because that clause the 10 percent clause which is gone now which was what they're arguing about with Kutinsky, because it's gone and because there is a potential change of ownership coming in the summer you'd imagine any major party interested in, especially in a full takeover for hundreds of millions you'd imagine if one of the first questions would be what's the situation with the london stadium can we buy it or not even can we buy it can we get it will they give it to us they're losing this much money per year can we take it off their hands and then you've got the dispute with the athletics etc etc so it's not a great situation for the LLDC to be in but I would argue it's not a great situation for West Ham to be in either and there's always been this anticipation that the plan would be to get to the summer 23 that owners would sell up etc etc but you'd imagine as part of that plan the club probably had a bit of an idea as to what would happen with the London Stadium and I've always assumed that they were hoping it would get to the point eventually where they almost just give it to West Ham and say, here, you take it. We can't afford this anymore. We're hemorrhaging cash. It's a little bit embarrassing. You take it from us kind of thing. And that would increase the value of West Ham because now we own our stadium. But we don't. We haven't. And it feels a little bit like cut your nose off to spite your face from the LLDC in the regards that they seem a bit more prepared to lose between 10 and 20 million a year and give it to West Ham and I kind of get it to be honest with you I kind of get it because the LLDC could very possibly look, be looking at West Ham thinking well if you want to sell your club which you know is what it's widely believed that you do this stadium is going to be a key part of that and if a major investor comes along and pays a few hundred million for West Ham United and they want the London Stadium now we can sell it now we can essentially we can set our asking price and we'd be able to recoup a large part of the losses that we sustained since West Ham moved into the stadium. But we'll have to wait and see. This one is not finished. It's not going to wait anytime soon, especially if we get relegated. There's a whole more, there's a whole lot of clauses come in if West Ham get relegated, including our rent gets cut in half. I mean, at the minute, we only pay two and a half million. I think it's increased slightly. I think it increases slightly year by year. But let's just say three million in that contract our rent gets cut in half if West Ham get relegated to the championship so it's, it's going to get worse for the LLDC it's not going to get any better but I also think it's going to get worse for West Ham as well because they've never been the easiest party to work with or to communicate with and when you see the letters between Kevin and Lynn you get the impression that the club have been up against it a little bit because in the letter it says you know I've, I've, I've wrote to you a couple of months ago you've still not replied um and then you know the reply is a little bit vague as well and if that's the communication between the two it's no wonder that things have struggled you know karen asks lynn for like a private meeting which lynn declines and said i don't want one i don't want a private meeting with west ham i don't want a private meeting with you either this is the situation we're in so it's never been the best relationship and i think it's only getting worse and like i said when karen said why don't you speak to us like you did with Pi? The, the response is very clear, which is there's a legal dispute going on between us two at the minute. That's it. We're not going to start any other lines of communication. Let's get that resolved first. So it's not it's not been a good relationship and it's not getting any better anytime soon. And I think this London Stadium thing, it's not going away. Because like I said, I do believe if we were to have a major investor in the summer, whether it's a full takeover or just a majority takeover, the London Stadium would be at the top of the conversation because we don't own it. Because, well, can we own that? How much is it to acquire that football stadium? Um, we'll wait and see. More to come on this. Now, what else came out in the last 24 hours is that Chelsea are looking at rebuilding Stamford Bridge. So they would need a temporary home for a couple of seasons. And five stadiums have been listed as potential homes for Chelsea. The London Stadium being one of them. Now, I'm not actually that bothered by this rumour, but hypothetically, if it was true, I don't believe it, just to be clear, but hypothetically, I think it would be the final nail in the coffin for a lot of people because, you know, I am one of these people, I don't like the London Stadium. I don't like it. I've got used to it, um, but I'm, I still don't like it. If we were to move tomorrow, it wouldn't bother. I'd be delighted if we moved. There's nowhere to go. I know that. And before someone says Upton Park's not coming back, get over it. I'm aware of that. I, it's possible to accept that that's gone 
but also not like the new stadium. That's where I am. I know we can't go back. I know we can't go anywhere. I know we're stuck there, but I still don't like the stadium. But for a lot of people, I think if Chelsea, or to be honest with you, any other team were to ground share with us, I think that might be the final nail in the coffin that says, no, this, this is too much now. I, I'm done. I've given as much as I can, but th that's it. I've had enough. But like I said, I don't believe it. And the reason I don't believe it is because of everything that we've just discussed in relation to the LLDC. They couldn't order a piss up in a brewery. Let's be honest with us. Karen has pulled their pants down massively over the, the deal with the London Stadium. The, the financial costs associated to them with West Ham playing there is just ridiculous. It really was a deal of the century financially for West Ham United. So... In order for Chelsea to be allowed to ground share with West Ham at the London Stadium, there would have to be something in there which, well, allows the LLDC to, to authorise that without the consultation of West Ham. I just can't see it whatsoever. Um, somebody smarter and brighter than me will be able to go and have a look and find it just like that. But I would be shocked if there's not clauses in there that says... No, no ground sharing. We are the only football team that play in that stadium. I would be absolutely gobsmacked if there wasn't. In fact, I'm quite confident there will be. Because like I said, everything that we've spoken about, all these legal disputes, West Ham have always got the upper hand. West Ham have always, always been one up on the London Stadium. Now, you could argue that London Stadium had their small victories along the way. They have. I think those are the types of ones West Ham are willing to take on the chin for the long-term game. You look at this legal dispute they've got going on at the minute the LLDC have now spent 7.1 million on legal fees since West Ham moved in 7 million they've spent just essentially arguing I know it's not quite that but just just bear with me essentially arguing they spent 7 million arguing West Ham tend to not really engage in legal battles with LLDC if they're not very confident of winning them. And they tend to win them as well. And I expect West Ham to win this one in regards to the Kratisky investment as well. Like I said, I had a look at the stipulation around the, the clauses as to what determines how much West Ham have to pay the LLDC. And while it's quite clear in regards to some things, such as the shareholder loans, that's named, it doesn't mention, for example, we've got 30 million media funding rights the issue that's not mentioned at all so is that taken into consideration or is that not taken into consideration it's not very clear one way or another which is where i think a large part of the issue comes from but west ham feel confident that they, they'll win this legal battle so in regards to chelsea grand sharing at the london stadium don't believe it um like i said it's just a i think it's a bit of a nothing article to be honest with you it named four other stadiums craving cottage was one um, Wembley, Twickenham and I think it was maybe Reading's ground actually was the was the fifth one I, I would be surprised if it wasn't Wembley if I'm honest with you but um, Chelsea at the London Stadium can't see it LLDC beating West Ham in this legal dispute can't see it more stories coming about West Ham, the LLDC and the London Stadium. Oh, absolutely. I can see plenty of them. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this one, uh, just a bit of an update on all the news in regards to what's happening at the London Stadium at the minute, please do drop a like on it by clicking thumbs up, subscribing to Hammers Chat, and I'll catch you tomorrow.